Hello everyone! In this lecture we're going to review some process capability examples. Remember that process capability is defined as the process spread and is always equal to Six Sigma. So remember, to do process capability we have to make sure that our distribution of the data is normal and once we have done control chart our process is under control. Those are the two prerequisites to make sure that we can do a process capability study. So our case number one is when the process capability is less than the tolerance. So this means that our process is quite capable. So we have our tolerance and we have our process spread. So when they are less than our tolerance, the process could shift from one side to the other side and it still will produce the products that are meeting our quality standards which are defined by our tolerance so we can say that there are there's some room for error and this is the case that we always want to have case number two is when the process capability is equal to the tolerance it is an acceptable situation, but as you can see, there's no room for improvement. If our process shift to the left or to the right, it will be producing products that are not meeting the quality standards. Case number three is when we have the process capability greater than the tolerance. This means that we are already producing products that are not meeting our quality specifications. So this means that our process is not capable. So remember, we have the three cases. Case number one, process quite capable. Case number two, it, the, the process is capable, but there's no room for error. And case number three, the process is not capable. Okay, so let's see the different steps that we have to follow to do a process capability study. And the first step is to make sure that we have the right amount of data points because a process capability study is always recommended to do it with at least a hundred measurements. So make sure that you have at least a hundred measurements. We calculate the range for each subgroup and the average range of all the subgroups. This is kind of the same way that we did the X bar and R control chart. We also have to calculate the population standard deviation using the average range and our factor D2, which can be found in the appendix table. And then we calculate our process capability because we make that equal to six sigma, or the standard deviation. We did it, and those are the steps to do it based on the range, but we can also do it based on the um, standard deviation. So if we do it based on the standard deviation, the same steps, you make sure that you have 100 measurements at least, then you calculate the standard deviation for each subgroup, then the average standard deviation, then you find the population standard deviation, and then you calculate the process capability. Also remember that in process capability, we can calculate indices. So the CP index is to measure the quality. And the way that we find it is using the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit divided by six sigma. If our CP is equal to one, we have case number two, which means that our process is capable, but there is no room for error. When our CP is greater than one, we have case one, which is our ideal case, which means that our process is quite capable. If the CP is less than one, we have case number three, which is that the process is not K. We also have the CPK, and the CPK is the minimum of the upper specification limit minus the process mean divided by three sigma, or the process mean minus the lower specification limit divided by three sigma, which is the standard deviation of the process population. As CP equal to 1, indicate that the process is producing products that conform to specification. It is good, but if the CPK is less than 1, that indicates that the process is producing product that does not conform to a specification. So we're always looking for a CPK equal to 1 or greater. 
we also can calculate the OPER capability index, which is the CPU and is the OPER specification limit minus the mean, the process mean, divided by 3 sigma, and we want a CPU greater or equal than 1. And we can also calculate the lower capability index, which is the process mean minus the lower specification limit divided by 3 sigma, and we also want a CPL greater or equal than 1. And we have the capability ratio, which is 6 sigma divided by the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit. We can estimate our standard deviation, and we can use it based on uh, utilizing the range, the average range, and the D2 factor, or utilizing this, the sample standard deviation, and the C4 factor. So let's start with this first example. We have a company producing kitchen worktop, and they have specified the length of one range, and is 120 centimeters plus minus 0 0.5 centimeters. That 0.25, that means our range for tolerance. So as a normal part of the production monitoring, control charts were kept for such specified measures, and all output was inspected against specification limits. A request from the sales team or tighter limits prompt the question of whether the limits could be reduced to plus minus 0 0.0 centimeters, as this could result in significant orders from a new customer who preferred not to shape work top to fit. So this means that we need to do a process capability study to see first if our process is capable utilizing that first tolerance and if it is now we can see if we can reduce the limits and and the process still being able uh, to produce right quality pork tops so how do we do this this is the um, data given we have uh, 25 subgroups and we have four observation in each subgroup and if we follow the rules, when we have four observations or less than 10 observations, we like to work with the range, which gives us a better um, result when we have less than 10 observations in each subgroup. So from the data, we can find the upper specification limit, which is 120 plus the 0 0.25, so it's 120.25, and the lower specification limit, which is 120 minus the 0 0.25, which is 119.75. So what do we do? We calculate the X bar and the range. So how do we calculate the X bar? Is the sum of the individual's observations divided by the total number of observations. And the range is the max number of the subgroup minus the minimum number. Then we calculate our average range, which is R bar, and it's the sum of the individual range for each subgroup divided by the total number of subgroup. Then with that average range, we calculate our population standard deviation and using the D2 factor for a um, four number of observations and then we have this number and then we calculate the process capability which is six times that population standard deviation so that's 0 0.1 so we know that if our process is capable is because that six the process capability which is 0 0.1 is less than the difference between our upper specification limit and a lower specification limit so we have case number one which just means that our process is quite capable. With this information, now we can uh, try to do the same study because now we know that it's quite capable, so there's some room for error, so it means that we can tie those uh, specification limits. You can also do your graph. What happened here is that the production supervisor used the control chart data to draw a histogram that's the one that we saw before, and check for normal distribution. We calculated the CPK um, across samples for a week's work. Then we showed that the process was currently so capable, and we did demonstrate that doing the process capability study, that um, inspections could be dropped at the new limit still met. 
So this turned out to be as a result of all specification limit coupled with several recent process improvement. As a result, the new orders were achieved and saving were also made on the specification cost. What you have to do is kind of repeat the same that we did, but you do it with those the tolerance being a 0 0.1, and you will see that still the process is capable. Example number two is that we now we have to assume that the specifications are 6.5 and 6.3 in the depth of a key wave problem. Determine the capability index before and after improvement. So you have the before population standard deviation and then the after when improvement was done and you see that the standard deviation is smaller. When, when standard deviation value is small that means that you are getting rid of variation in the process. So a small number in the standard deviation means that your process has less variation. So that's why we always call improvement when we have that. So you calculate the CP for before improvement and after improvement. You notice that the CP will be greater when you have a better your process is more capable and this is the number that we're trying to achieve. Third example, determine the process capability of Cypress bark bags in kilograms for the data given. Also determine the CP and the CPK for the upper specification limit of 130 kilograms and the lower specification limit of 75 kilograms. So this is the data given. Uh, we give you 25 subgroups and it gives you four observations in each one. So once again, it's, recommend, it's better or it's recommended to use the R steps to, to utilizing the range. So let's do this in Excel. Okay, so you can copy and paste your data from the PowerPoint to Excel. And then let's do the first step to calculate the X bar. And to calculate the X bar is just an average. So if you set equal average, it will open that formula. You select your area, your row, and you hit enter. Once you have that number, you can drag all the way down and it will find the average for the other subgroups. To find the range, we have to find the max number first of that same road and you subtract the minimum of that road as well and then you drag all the way down okay so we have the X bar and the R now let's calculate the R bar and the R bar is just a sum of all those individuals ranges um, divided by the number of subgroup, which is 25. Let me make sure that I have parentheses here, parentheses here, and then we calculate it. So our R bar is, is 14.88. Then we calculate our population standard deviation, which is equal to our R bar divided by our D2 factor. And our D2 factor with for observations, the sample size is 2.059. And we can format the cell to only show two or let's say four decimal places. All right, then we calculate our process capability, which is simple multiplying six times our population standard deviation. And we have a 43, let's format the cell. 43.36. So this is telling us that our process is quite capable of producing. Quite capable. There's a lot of room for improvement, which is is good. So we also have to determine the CP and the CPK. And for that, we have to use our upper specification limit and the lower specification limit um, that the problem um, gave us. So let's find the difference between the upper specification limit and the minus uh, the minus the lower specification limit and this is 130 minus 1075 you see that's 55 process capability is 
um, smaller than our tolerance of this is case number one, which um, just to uh, verify what I said before. Then we have to calculate our CP and is equal to the difference between the upper specification limit and the lower specification limit divided by the six sigma, which is our process capability. And our CP is equal to 1.2. And this is telling us that we have case number one and the process is quite capable. You can also find more examples under this link. So this is all for process capability examples.